Hey guys, it's a new year. It's 2024 and I'm still here, but I'm having a, let's say a bad hair day. So yeah. Anyway, today's show is very special. It's a review of the Denon DP 3000 NE direct drive turntable. Yep. And he, you know, here's the thing, Denon and direct drive, they've been doing this a very long time since 1971 their first direct drive was the dp 5500 and uh, i remember uh, denon turntables here in new york uh in the 70s and 80s they were pretty popular now they have been making direct drive turntables for the japanese market all along but this one the dp 3000 ne is a fresh start it's new from the ground up and uh, I got to say, my experiences, my hands-on experiences with this turntable have been so positive. Because that's the thing about turntables, unlike other audio components, you have to use them, you have to touch them and get a feel for them. And that's a big part of the experience of living with any turntable, especially a high-end turntable. The build quality is really, really nice for the price, which is two thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars and i'm going to show you uh, the turntable with the platter removed and the underside of the platter so you get a feel for the build quality just from examining these parts now the base is solid mdf and it's veneered with real ebony wood it's not plastic it's not vinyl it's real ebony wood but yeah the fit and finish the tone arm everything about it is above what you would expect for this price, $2,499. Now, I did spend a lot of time over the course of this review listening with headphones, and I'm happy to report that this turntable is extremely quiet. As a matter of fact, the first cartridge I used on it was a Grado Platinum 3 high output cartridge. And this cartridge has been known, and Grado cartridges can have hum issues, low level hum, and I'm listening with headphones and I heard no noise, no hum. It's dead quiet. Isolation from external shock is definitely above average. The feet, you can level the turntable with the feet. And it comes with a dust cover, a hinged plastic dust cover. Again, a very high quality. You know, it's a, it's a two-speed design, 33 and 45. Oh, what else? Uh, there is adjustable VTA, meaning you can raise and lower the back of the arm. The cueing lever itself is very skinny, a little, looks kind of delicate, but it is all metal and it definitely in operation feels great and it's very gentle in putting the stylus down into the groove. I think I mentioned that the turntable weighs a rather substan substantial 40.7 pounds. Now round back, pretty simple. There's an IEC uh, outlet there for power and a pair of high quality RCA jacks. There's no internal phono preamp. I listened to the turntable without doing any comparisons for quite some time. I listened with a few different cartridges. I listened with, yes, the Grado Platinum 3 high output cartridge. I listened with a Denon DL103 low output moving coil cartridge, uh, Ortofon Cadenza Blue, and something else. Oh, and the Dynavector XX2. Those are all low output moving coil cartridges. And I had good results with all of them. So as I'm working on the review, I'm thinking, obviously, I need to compare it with my Technics SL1200G. Now, the 1200G is a more expensive turntable. I believe the current price is $4,400. So it's almost $2,000 more expensive than the DP3000NE. So how are these turntables fair? Because I'm going to switch back and forth with the same cartridge. And how, what will be the difference in sound quality? But you know, for that sort of thing, I kept pushing that forward. I wasn't in a big hurry to do that. I just wanted to get into the thing of just using this turntable. Because it is, yeah, it is the touchy-feely parts of living with a turntable that really matter. Because you, if you have a great sounding turntable, but you just don't enjoy using it, well, it's not going to be much fun, is it? You've got you to be into it. Oh, and it does come with this cute little record weight 
it's a little lightweight and because of its small size, it doesn't really push, <laughs> let's say, the record down as well as my Fern and Roby record weight. So not so crazy about the record weight, but it is nicely done. It's a machine chunk of metal, the, the Denon record weight is, but mm, at the end of the day, I preferred using the Fern and Roby weight or no weight at all. Oh, by the way, the mat is a solid rubber mat, nice and thick, very uh, cushy, a cushy cushion for your LPs. So I just want to inject a little personal aside here, which is to say that I own and enjoy using this Technics SL1200G. It's a great turntable. Uh, it sounds great. It feels good in my hands. It's all, it checks all the boxes except one. It looks like a DJ turntable. Now that may be great for DJs and people who want to make do make believe DJ stuff. But for me, it's like, I don't want a turntable with a pitch control and all that stuff. It's anyway, it does kind of rub me the wrong way. And this turntable, the Denon looks and feels like an audiophile turntable. It makes no pretensions or aspirations to be a DJ turntable. Although I'm, I guess DJs could use it. But in any case, the, the contrast between the two in the way they look and just living with them is definitely uh, weighs heavily in this review. That is, I'm, I wish that Techniques would make turntables that didn't look like DJ turntables other than their most expensive model. So anyway, that's a part of this, part of my experience of living with the DP3000 for a couple of weeks. I also wanted to take a little bit of time early on to do a comparison between analog and digital. So I played the same recording, the same album uh, as a CD. It's the Miles Davis on the corner and also the LP on, on the Denon, right? Now, the thing is, as I'm doing this comparison, I stack the deck in favor of the digital because I was using really top flight digital gear. I was using the Jay's Audio CD Transport and also the Mola Mola Tembaki DAC. Now, the Tembaki DAC is a $14,000 DAC, so I gave the digital every, every advantage. This Miles Davis album, On the Corner, is one of my all-time favorites. It's electric. It has electric guitar. It has lots of percussion, funky bass, keyboards. There's a lot going on. And then Miles is playing through some sort of wah-wah pedal himself. So it's, it's dense. And I got to say, the CD and the LP did not sound much alike at all. I mean, the CD sound was very compressed, kind of lifeless. It was no bounce to it. It just sounded <laughs> like a cheap imitation. The LP, and this is not a special, you know, remastered LP. This is just the regular version of the LP. Sounded so much more alive and had more jump factor. It was exciting. And you're just hearing the musicians listening to each other and these funky grooves just rolling on and on and on. Just great stuff. And I go to the CD and it's like, where did the magic go. <laughs> now, it's not a perfect analog to digital comparison, but I wanted to start off with something that made a stark difference. And like I said, I stacked the deck in favor of the digital sound by using a very high-end deck and, and CD transport. Oh, the cartridge, in case you're wondering, was an Ortofon Cadenza Blue low output moving coil cartridge and the phono preamp Parasound JC3+. Plus. At this point, I wanted to compare the DP3000NE with the Technics SL1200G using the same cartridge on both turntables. The Zoo modified Denon 103 low output moving coil cartridge. So I'm switching between the two turntables that way. And uh, the, the record was this Tommy Guerrero. I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. It's, a, it's an instrumental record of guitar, just grooves and it's funky, it's bluesy, it's just a lot of fun. And the difference between the Techniques turntable, the sound of the Techniques turntable and the sound of the Denon was really interesting because at first, not surprisingly, they did sound mm, kind of the same. Yeah, in a way that's to be expected. But then as I listened more and more, what I heard was, was that the Techniques had more dynamic to it. There was more dynamic range and actually it sounded a little bit louder. With the same cartridge going back and forth between the two, it sounded a little bit louder on the Techniques 
turntable, the 1200G, and switching over to the DP3000NE, it sounded warmer, let's see, cushier, <laughs> rounder, um, but not as alive sounding as it did with the Technics SL1200G. Please don't misunderstand where I'm coming from in talking about these comparisons. Uh, the Technics turntable is almost $2,000 more expensive than the DP3000NE. And what is it that makes one turntable sound better than another with the same cartridge? It really is about detail and clarity and dynamics in life. That's what more money usually buys you if you choose wisely, right? So it's not the fairest comparison because the Technics is more expensive, but it's the only turntable I had on hand. But please understand when I was just playing records with the DP3000NE, I was digging it. I was having a good time and I'm playing classical music, really quiet stuff and hearing into it, fantastic. I'm playing blues, I'm playing rock, playing all kinds of music and at no point was I feeling like I was missing out on anything except when I did the comparison, which is the, you know, what's part of the, the regimen of doing a review. But anyway, I don't want you to take this the wrong way in terms of how I'm putting the, the Denon down relative to the techniques. So let's just move on to, so Steve, what do you really think of the Denon DP3000NE? I think it's, it's, it's unexpected is what it is, because I didn't see this coming. I didn't know that Denon was going to release a serious uh, direct drive turntable. They've made a lot of very decent, affordable turntables over the years, but I, wasn't, I didn't see this coming. And I'm so happy that there is an affordable direct drive turntable uh, that looks really great, feels really solid. Um, yeah, it's the, good, it's the real deal. But anyway, nothing but two thumbs up for the DP3000NE. And now we're gonna get to, <laughs> you know it, you love it, the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. Michael sent in these pictures. He lives in Vancouver. That's in Canada. <laughs> anyway, he's into the DIY speaker thing and he's using modernized Alltech 620 cabinets with Alltech 416 8B woofers. But he also wanted the ability to swap out horns and compression drivers on top. So he started out with 511B horns and Alltech 80888A drivers, but then he moved on to using MLR EH bow tie horns with the same drivers. He is running the woofers off of a Pioneer M22 Class A amp and the horns from a Fisher 400 amp that was converted by David Yi in Vancouver. They're crossing over at 1K with mini DSP attenuating the horns and, and Heathkit AS101 crossovers. For sources, there's two, count them two, Technics 1200M3D turntables with Shure M44G cartridges. And, a, and also in addition to that, there's a WIM mini streamer and Cambridge Azor DAC Magic. The preamp is a Master Sound Radius 2. It's a rotary mixer from the UK. That's fantastic. Thank you, Michael, and Happy New Year. Okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg. It's 2024. Thank you so much for being here and sticking around to the end of the video. If you dig what I do here on the channel with reviews and my conversations with Herb Reichert and thought pieces and visiting stores and all that stuff, please consider supporting my work through my Patreon. It's super easy to do. The address is on the screen right now. Uh, Patreon accepts payments in dollars, pounds, euros, and most other currencies. And in the top two tiers, you can join for a couple of bucks a month, but in the top two tiers, 50 or $100 a month, you and I will have a conversation every month at the beginning of the month. What else? Well, I think that's it. Please subscribe to this channel if you, if you haven't done that yet. And please give me a thumbs up when you think I deserve it. It helps. It helps the algorithm. It, well, it helps me. Anyway, on to the next one. Again, my name is Steve Guttenberg. I am the Audiophiliac. 
Thank you for watching. See you later.